Hello, this is Sherry Fletcher, and the episode that we're going to share with you today is How Did That Lake Get There? And it is a history of Elephant Butte Dam, the project that changed Sierra County forever. We would like to thank Jay Hopkins and Cindy Carpenter for their work in this project, and also we would like to recognize the Centennial Project, which this piece is a part of, along with, shortly, we will be celebrating the anniversary of the Elephant Butte Dam, the 100th anniversary of the dam, and so we are joining these two celebrations together with this presentation. So I hope you enjoy it. Before the lake, it was lots of dry desert land, before the waters were ever to fill what is to become the lake. And here's an example of some of the housing that was there that were undoubtedly workers that were helping build the dam. We found in our research that who changed the dam dam's name? Because initially in some of the early documentation, it was Ingle Dam, then later it was reported under the name of Woodrow Wilson Dam, and lastly, Elephant Butte Dam. We know that uh, in doing our research that the Rio Grande Republican ran the headlines in December of 1910 reading, Towns Soon to be Wiped Off the Earth. And those towns that were to be obliterated by the water of the future Elephant Butte Reservoir were Praje, Cantarico, Cantadero, St. Aubin, St. Jose, Alamosito, and Zapata. These small villages were subject to the wrath of Mother Nature during periodic flooding, forcing their residents to move their locations to, the new, lo to new locations. But this man's flood that would cause nearly 2,000 2, people to lose their homes was something that would be forever. Traveling by wagon, El Paso attorney P.W. Dent, in connection with the Reclamation Service, spent three weeks securing 37 purchases from Mexican ranchers, and he would not stop until he had every foot of the 40,000 acres that was being bought secured. Victoria Land and Cattle Company sold 33,000 acres of U.S. government to the U.S. government after court battles and the government's effort to condemn the land. The purchase price would go from $5 to $23 an acre. Praje, Cantarico, San Alban, San Jose, Alamosito, they were all part of a land grant of 400,000 acres given to Pedro Armendariz in 1720 by the King of Spain. And in a North Carolina newspaper called The Landmark in 1926, that newspaper also talks about six villages being wiped out by the rising waters of Lake B.M. Hall. B.M. Hall was one of the the second name that was the lake was named after. The first name was Ingle Lake, and then the B.M. Hall was a, a surveyor who was held in very high regard. Here's a picture looking south, and this is a very good example of what the area looked like before they started damming the water with the dam. And this, it's a very good example of how the Rio Grande could be too thin to plow and too thick to drink. Of course, building the dam did not come without a cost. Nathan Boyd went to England to obtain foreign backing. And in October 1895, the Rio Grande Irrigation and Land Company was incorporated in England and Dr. Boyd was appointed the director of the company. Though English investors had come up with about $5 million capital value, 
Boyd himself had a large number of the shares of capital stock in this company. Here's an example of what the incorporation looked like. And uh, they, they sold them, and, uh, but they failed to meet the deadline, which was five years. So the whole operation of the Ingle Dam being built by the private industry was null and void. Along the way, Anson Mills came up with what he considered a better alternative to the Elephant Butte project. In 1896, he was proposing an international dam to be built at the site north of El Paso. In fact, if those of you that traveled El Paso, a sarco, the large, the large chimney stacks that are there, that would have been the site of where the international dam would have been built. It would have been situated on the U.S.-Mexican border at the cost of about, oh, $300,000. And uh, Anson Mills reasoned that it would establish a reservoir, stabilize the flow of the water, and better serve the irrigation and irrigators in Texas. But there was also mounting pressure from Mexico to go along with an international dam because they were feeling slighted and not getting the runoff that they felt was coming to them. And Mexico felt that the territory of, of New Mexico and the United States was blocking the ancestral flow of the Rio Grande. So therefore there were lawsuits in the wings. In 1897, the U.S. District Attorney for New Mexico uh, was interviewed and he was doing the research and interviewing people on this Rio Grande Irrigation Company and there was the position that the Rio Grande was navigable and because the War Department then could weigh in on the navigability of waterways, uh, it had to be recognized that if in fact the, Elef the Rio Grande was navigable, then there would be other stipulations as to how they would dam that river. So there was, a, there was a lot of controversy around that, and the Harbor Act of 1890 prohibited the creation of any obstruction that had not been authorized by law to navigate capacity of any water in respect to the United States. So with that being said, there was more conflict and more sorting out of where and when a dam was to be built on the Rio Grande. In 1900, in Frederick, Maryland newspaper, The News ran an article that was saying that Attorney Childers had contacted Colonel Warren Sutton, who was an associate counsel for the government of the Elephant Butte Dam, and notified him that Judge Parker had ruled against the government and the English company, which was the Nathan Boyd Company, or the Arrig Rio Grande Irrigation District Company, could go ahead and build a dam at Elephant Butte for the purpose of supplying water to Mexican and American territories. Refusing to give up, Colonel Sutton warned the government to take all the cases all the way to the Supreme Courts. And in fact, that did happen, and the Rio Grande Dam and Irrigation Company was found to have forfeited its rights to build the dam in the territorial courts of New Mexico in May of 1903. The project had not been completed in the allocated five years. Here is an early picture of the building of the dam. Cement being poured, which may very well have been the first cement that they were pouring. It is ironic that a photographer would take just a random picture of cement being poured unless it was something 
of a significance. In November of 1904, Engineer M.B. Hall represented the United States Bureau of Reclamation and submitted his final report to the Irrigation, National Irrigation Congress in El Paso, Texas. And the data compiled with surveys, studies, and reports concluded that the ideal location for the dam would, should be at Elephant Butte and not closer to El Paso. The, the argument there was that if, in fact, the International Dam was built outside or north of El Paso, that they would flood thousands of acres of land between El Paso and Las Cruces. And this area up here, this, around the little-known area of Ingle, New Mexico, was ideal because there were mountain slopes with natural basins for a new lake. A year after the agreement was made, plans were drawn up. The responsibility for building the dam lay with three American engineers, Arthur Davis, Lewis Hall, and E.H. Baldwin, who were construction engineers, and the Congressional Act of February 25, 1905, authorized the provision for construction of Ingle Dam which was named for the nearest train stop on the railroad track at Ingle, New Mexico. The original proposal was to supply water for irrigation of 156,000 acres of valley land in the United States supplying Sierra, Doniana counties in New Mexico, and El Paso County in Texas. But Mexico still had to be satisfied. And in December of 1906, an issue of the Galveston Daily News reported from, from liable sources that the Mexican government had ratified the treaty providing for a dam to be built, but it allowed equitable distribution of water. And initially, if they were allowed the water Mexico would withdraw its $20 million claim against the United States. The Treaty of 1906 gave water for the irrigation lands on the Mexican side of El Paso, and the Rio Grande Reclamation Project would carry into effect the terms of the treaty with Mexico and rectify their losses of water from the Rio Grande. Another hurdle that was overcome in 1909 was when the Victoria Land and Cattle Company of Arizona, which, of, excuse me, of California, which at one time owned the Armendaris Land Grant, uh, they, they argued that the price of the federal government wanted to pay for their land was extremely low. Victoria Land and Cattle Company wanted $17.83 an acre, but the Reclamation Service was only wanted to offer them $1.83. So again, there was another court battle, and for the next three years, the battle was fought, and the government would eventually condemn 24,730 acres of land, and the final settlement was six dollars and sixty six cents an acre for thirty thousand acres. The Atlanta Constitution newspaper of 1910 reported that the big reservoir to be formed by Elephant Butte Dam will be known as Lake B.M. Hall and for fitting recognition of Mr. Hall's invaluable services to the people of the Rio Grande Valley. So as the construction began, these are an example of the tents that the workers would, would live in. And because the dam was a federal project, uh, if you were caught engaging in excessive drinking, you were dismissed. 
and a sanitation officer went around the camp daily policing the area for all kinds of waste. An exercise program was encouraged. Drinking from the hot springs was discouraged because of measles and diphtheria that were epidemic at the time. So an enterprising local resident from Paloma's Hot Springs hauled water from a spring in the Williamsburg area and sold clean water for five cents a bucket. The records indicate there were diligent efforts. Fourteen people died of disease. So what we have then was a letter being signed, which is on the right-hand side of the page, that was asking, it's from the commercial club. The commercial club was a forerunner of the Chamber of Commerce. Otto Goetz was president. This was 1914. And what they were asking for was that Paloma Springs requested an appointment of a health officer for Paloma Hot Springs, which is now Truth or Consequences area. As I said earlier, because drinking was not allowed and whiskey was not allowed on the in the camp where they were the the workers worked to build the dam, that it didn't take long for enterprising individuals to set up bars or saloons five miles to the west in a town called Palomas Hot Springs. Here's an example of a star saloon. When the dedication happened, Woodrow Wilson did not attend for the dedication, but sent A.A. A. Jones as his representative. And a division of the army came, and there was a band, and the band of the 23rd United States Infantry escorted Jones as he arrived from Cutter by special train. There were 350 delegates from the International Irrigation Congress and International Farm Congress, along with other guests who lined the bank of the Elephant Butte. Jones stood on a platform built over the spillway of the dam, shadowed by the elephant-shaped rock structure in the background, and he delivered his speech on behalf of the president to the crowd. Here's a picture that was taken of individuals who attended the dedication of the dam. Early pictures of the dam. One of the fascinating pieces that we found in our research, in the Santa Fe, New Mexican, ran an article dated March 15, 1917, Heavy Guard for Ingle Dam. And under the headlines ran the caption, Suspected German at Cachillo in Sierra County. The article went on to say that the U.S. troops from Columbus were being sent to the Elephant Butte Dam near Ingle to guard the dam for fear of the United States would go to war with Germany, the dam might be dynamited. The movement of any and all Germans in that area of New Mexico was also being watched by Secret Service as two Germans had recently been reported to pass through Ingle. This was also the headlines of the Washington Post, which we've certainly found that was, was interesting, that it made the New Mexico and Ingle Dam made the front page of the Washington Post. In doing more research on this topic, we found that Dr. Edward Koff had come to the area from Tarion in January and was said to have been admitted had admitted being Pancho Villa's personal physician. He said he was at that time practicing medicine in Cachillo, New Mexico, which was just 14 miles from Elephant Butte Dam. And he had recently been seen with a number of German refugees from Mexico before suddenly disappearing. So 
With that in mind, with heightened alert, March 4, 1917, President Wilson gave his second term inaugural speech, and then the United States declared war on Germany. Today, the Elephant Butte Dam is designated as a National Historical Engineer Landmark. Uh, it's the, this particular National Historical Engineering Landmark group, the American Society for Engineers, is the oldest national professional engineering society in the United States. It was founded in 1852. Elephant Butte Dam is known for being the first civil engineering structure with international allocations for water and it is also credited for providing a dependable source of irrigation water for farmers along the Rio Grande. In 1971 the debt on the dam was finally retired and the, the, uh, the water is now it has always been owned by the farmers but the debt was retired on on the dam here's an example of an aerial view of the dam when we looked at the recreation that was to follow we found in 1952 there was a man named George Sickles that said that he held the first and second concession for fishing and boating at Elephant Butte Lake after it had been completed. He went on to say that the lake's first name was called Hall Lake. In 1963, the state parks took over the management of Elephant Butte Lake, and the state parks of New Mexico started major construction efforts to cater to tourists. Roads were paved, concrete ramps were built, and the old Hot Springs Marina structure was towed to a new site and was named Hot Springs Land. In 1965, Governor Jack Campbell would dedicate $500,000 to Elephant Butte State Park. And in 1966, the Parks and Recreation Commission asked to transfer three concession contracts at Elephant Butte and Cavaya Lakes from William Galloway and Kenneth Johnson to Harry Whipple of Riadosa. And these contracts would cover the concessions of the Elephant Butte Lodge and the marina along with the marina at Cavaya Lake. As the decades go along, there was business was done differently in the Santa Fe area and in state parks. And in 1974, in order to run a concession or a marina at the lake, it became necessary to make a proposal to the state that specified how long you would run the marina, could not be for more than 10 years, and indicate what you would pay as a gross receipt. Mr. Galloway and Mr. Johnston of TRC chose to enter into negotiations with a company called Elephant Butte Incorporated whose principal stockholder was Albuquerque land developer D.W. Falls. Falls committed to build the area around Elephant Butte, the lake of Elephant Butte, and so he built the Elephant Butte Inn somewhere in the 1970s. Jewel Mims owned roughly 6,500 acres of land which he had purchased from Victoria Land and Cattle Company. Mims's vision was to develop the area and build a golf course which was documented in his initial water rights applications of 1954. Today the Sierra del Rio has fulfilled Jewel Mims' vision of a golf course. And in looking at the early documents from Jewel Mims, Jewel paid $1.32 an acre for his land when he moved from Magnus Springs, which is in the Glenwood area, 
north of Silver City to the area of Hot Springs during the Depression. In 1925, the Sierra County Advocate had become the successor to the Hot Springs Maverick. And a man in Hot Springs told the local paper, what Hot Springs ought to have is, a good, is, is good golfing grounds. Such an institution would be a drawing card for many golf players who pass this way. And as talk about a visionist in 1925 to recommend that, the paper reported that Mr. McElvoy had offered the ground necessary to build the first golf course. Here is an early picture of the camping areas around dam site. This would have been a reunion or a get together from, of individuals who came to winter in this area and they would all get together and they would typically have uh, picnics or luncheons for people from Kansas or Iowa or Illinois, wherever the snowbirds would come in and this is such an example of that, of that type of a, of a community get together of snowbirds that visited the area in the winter months. Here's a picture of the commemorative stone of the Boy Scouts who lost their lives through an adventure that ended in tragedy. And it was March 27, 1943. The young men, only one of their bodies was found. At this time, the lake was, 1943, the lake was extremely high. It was in March, the water was very cold. The young men were to camp and spend a weekend to earn merit badges out at the lake. They found a boat pulled up on shore and they decided to go to Rattlesnake Island, but they never made it. This was the first time that there was an attempt to bring a, a deep sea diver from Houston to come down and try to find the boys' bodies. But the terrain was so steep and the rocks were so difficult to walk on that the deep sea diver almost died himself. But this stone here commemorates three of the boys whose bodies were never found. As part of this tragedy, New Mexico in 1943 with the addition of the El Paso Herald, there was an announcement then that New Mexico would inspect all, bo all boats at Elephant Butte Lake because of the death of the Boy Scouts in the boating accidents. And so that eventually expanded on from Elephant Butte to other waterways and other sources of water in the state of New Mexico. Here's a picture of young men sitting and enjoying the view of the lake. During the CCC and WPA times, there are Butte Gardens that were built to look out above the lake. And they are beautiful. The, the stonework was done by the, the, the core of, of uh, the, civilian, the Civilian Conservation Corps. They, they did much of the beautiful stonework that still we still see today around Elephant Butte. This was an example of a Navy plane that was leaving San Diego and going to somewhere outside of Houston. And they developed engine trouble. And uh, 
if you read the reports in the paper, they really thought they were goners. But the pilot looks down and sees this huge body of water. And it was able to land, they were able to bring in the part and repair the plane and then take off from Elephant Butte. Early picture of what it was like to clean your fish at the dam site marina. Large strings of nice looking bass that came out of the lake in the 40s. Some interesting facts, like how did the Lions Beach get its name? And it is said that old timers called the area that was popular for bathing Lions Beach. The Lions Beach was derived from the Lions Organization of Hot Springs, New Mexico. They adopted the area, taking out vegetation and making a nice, clean beach for bathers. Later on, it was renamed and it still, to this day, has been renamed again. The reason that some of the names have changed was because there's been clashes of various groups over the last 25 years. And if anyone is interested in guiding visitors to an area in the lake, they probably need to call and find out the name of that area uh, because they're wanting to make sure that there's not unnecessarily unnecessary fighting with various groups that may come and visit the lake area. Dam site, restaurant, has been recently closed for renovation, so one ought to call to make sure that they're open, and they could, could contact Marina Del Sur if they needed more information on dam site. City of Elephant Butte, which is about four miles north of Elephant Butte State Park is named for the extinct volcanic cone that resembles an elephant, which is located on the south end of the lake. Elephant Butte State Park, which is set in the lower Rio Grande Valley of south central New Mexico, is one of the largest and most popular state parks in New Mexico. Affectionately known as the Butte, the 40 mile reservoir serves as a water sports destination and lots of water based recreation, boating, skiing, fishing, scuba diving, canoeing, sandy beaches with quiet coves, and enough open water for cabin cruisers, houseboats, and sail and sailboats. Elephant Butte was first State Park was first opened in 1965 and with warm waters and abundant camping, picnicking, and boating facilities at Truth or Consequences, easy access, Truth or Consequences within five miles, it attracts visitors from all over. Over the years, the State Park has continued to develop campsites and electrical hookups for RVs. Many campsites have shelters and grills. When the lake water is low, large beach areas attract lakeside campers. There's comfort stations with showers, dump stations, playgrounds, boat ramps, concession run marinas for conveniences. The visitor can contain interpretive centers and visit the exhibits of geology, history, and ecology of the area. The first residents of the Butte were creatures that lived in vast shallow oceans, ancient ammonites, they are the extinct relatives of today's Nautilus. 
After oceans covered much of New Mexico and that receded, the area became warm, humid hunting grounds for the Tyrannosaurus rex. This fire, fierce creature roamed the area more than 60 million years ago. It was the largest land-dwelling predator of all time, weighing more than seven ton and reached a length of 40 feet. And their fossils have been found along with the armor dinosaur, the horn dinosaur, who have also been, remains have been discovered in the rock formations. Well, adios for now. Thanks for your interest in Sierra County's history around the lake. We hope that we've enlightened you and we hope that you will visit the lake and enjoy our history and enjoy the beautiful area as known as Elephant Butte State Park. Thanks. Bye.